Oh my God, the news today, oh geez, oh geez. And so I wake up obviously to put together this show uh, fairly early on. On the East Coast, you might think you wake up really late because of the way time zones work. But here it's pretty early. And so I wake up, I get my coffee, I sit down in a darkened room so that I don't wake up my partner. And uh, every update was more and more devastating. So in Israel right now, you have two stories. You have the uh, opening of the US embassy in Jerusalem, the, the switching over of the historic embassy in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which marks official recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, which is uh, consequential in a number of different ways. And then at the same time, you have a massive, I don't know what the word would be, I guess protest is technically true, but it's much worse than that. It's being described as a pitched battle. I don't think the word battle really fits um, but it has resulted in a number of casualties. Over 1,700 Palestinian demonstrators have been wounded, um, something like four or 500 critically wounded by uh, live ammunition. 41 Palestinians as of the time of this filming uh, have already been killed um, during these, uh, the, the, the demonstration at the border fence. So uh, these Palestinians have moved. Um, the ostensible reason is to uh, breach the barrier and move into Israel. Um, now, some spurring them on have said that it has happened and have said, now you must go and go through this. Apparently, it hasn't actually happened. And one of the reasons it hasn't happened is because it's incredibly heavily defended uh, by Israeli soldiers using a combination of things like tear gas and also live ammunition. And while a number of people have died over the course of the past month or two in clashes like this, um, this is by far the deadliest uh, incident so far. It is such a difficult thing to really figure out what is happening. Mm -hmm. The fog of war is still hanging very low, but the one thing that we know about that fog is it's mostly tear gas. It's a lot of tear gas. One way you can characterize this location based on videos I've seen, photos I've seen is, you know, the larger idea is what you've said. It's people trying to get from Gaza into the, you know, conventionally considered Israeli area, though if you look mm -hmm. at settlements in Gaza, it seems like Israel's in Gaza. Yeah. Um, so but, the, the barriers but, get a little bit blurry, except where they are literally barriers. However, right now you could also characterize that zone as people who are getting shot with tear gas trying to get to a place where there is no tear gas. Mm -hmm. And it is all, if you take a giant step back, you see how it plays into this event today especially, but the rhetorical parade leading up to today of US and Israel getting closer um, and trying to take a harder line by doing things that no president has done before, such as moving the, um, the official embassy and recognition of capital yeah. to Jerusalem from Tel Aviv. Yeah, and we should acknowledge that uh, amongst everything else that's happening there, this is another thing that Trump said he was going to do, that there was some indication early on that maybe he was going to delay it by a long time, but no, he, he did it, and uh, it's having something like the effects we predicted it would. Uh, the international response has been obviously uh, critical, but in the region it hasn't, it hasn't led to war or anything like that, but it is certainly leading to an increasing body count on a daily basis. Um, and, and not shockingly, although many people around the world and certainly in the US who know little about this situation historically and little about it currently might say, well, isn't that, isn't that the capital? I mean, isn't that where it should be? They don't necessarily know sort of some of the prerequisites for what has traditionally been the idea of what a two state solution would actually look like in that region. And obviously you made the, the reference to um, uh, the Israelis moving into these areas that are not considered part of Israel to build settlements and all that. So it, throughout, the situation has gotten incredibly complicated, uh, purposefully complicated, I would mm -hmm. say, in terms of uh, of what the borders actually are, of what whose land the uh, different areas should actually be. Um, but the, the changeover of the embassy is obviously incredibly significant for the people who are still living under, in basically what uh, Noam Chomsky just described as the world's largest open air prison. Um, it's obviously a very complex situation. Yes, that is, True, and it's, in many ways, it's getting simplified. <laughs> Is that weird? Mm -hmm. You're because, saying by, by the, okay, the Trump so administration Bolton, not giving a damn about Bolton's one side? Bolton's statement is, we are just recognizing reality. Mm -hmm. And that is an attempt, when you're trying to wrap your mind around what's going on, that is an attempt to at least better understand the position of our president and our administration, which is, listen, over time, yes, originally Tel Aviv was intended to be the capital of, of Israel, but over time, as the, uh, you know, times have changed, 
the de facto capital of, Jer of Israel has become Jerusalem mm -hmm. as a way to say, in a very Israeli way, back off. Yeah. We are here, you hate us, we know you hate us, and as you hear from Netanyahu, if there is a, or I don't know, whatever, pick a metaphor, but if there's a drizzle here, there's going to be a hailstorm in your backyard. Mm -hmm. You know, if you pee on us, we're going to pour gasoline on you and light you on fire. Like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And that's the, that since the beginning has been the Israeli stance. And that's something that, you know, as a Jew, like I get it, mm -hmm. you know, there is this prevailing concept of anti-Semitism where it's like, listen, yes, they put us here, they recognize, you know, someone else set up Israel. But since we've been here, you guys have been trying to kill us. And now we have, this is the, this is the rhetorical stance that Israel has always taken. Mm -hmm. That said, it is a mess, as you can see now. Yeah. And for people who have, likewise on the other side, just kind of been living there the whole time to see this be the way that Israel conducts business and as America has shifted from, its role as the dispassionate arbiter mm -hmm. to someone who's like, are you sure you're really a dispassionate arbiter? Yeah. To, oh, so you're on Israel's side now. I got it. Yeah. And now you're saying They're that the recognition of reality. It. it is such a difficult thing. I mean, what, what is your take on it, John? Well, I mean, I'm shocked that things have spiraled out of control this way under the stewardship of Jared Kushner, the most qualified person to handle this situation Has in the history Has he played of any roles in it? No. He hasn't God done only knows. Anything. I saw today a statement from him, written, of course, because he doesn't have a voice with which to vocalize. Um, he said, uh, the Palestinians are being a part of the problem. They should be a part of the solution. I mean, I guess their bodies are problematic for you in terms of the narrative, I suppose. And look, you're going to see... You're gonna see shots, you, you mentioned the tear gas, and it's being described as a battle, although I would say the battle is typically between two armed groups. Um, and you see it and you think, oh my God, this is chaos. Maybe they had to shoot. Um, but it's also tear gas being fired at people who literally have tennis rackets to bat away the tear gas. And it's people who are trying to push against a barrier, which is, which is not the same as right. having a gun in several well, fundamental ways. There are people with guns because mm -hmm. they're using handguns to try to shoot down the drone mm -hmm. that is dropping tear gas on them. Yes, yes, and uh, they have uh, flaming kites, which I had not heard of before. Well, you read the I Kite guess, Runner, this is the sequel. There you go, and uh, I guess kites are a concern. Um, I would say false equivalence is a larger concern, though, and you're gonna see a lot of it today.